everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to review <laughs> the Flash Season 1. And this review is going to be filled with spoilers because it's going to be pretty damn impossible to review this without mentioning certain details that happened in this season. But if you do not care about spoilers, then go right ahead and enjoy this review. The pilot episode I thought was good. It went off to a good start. After that pilot episode, however, this show just got better and better and better. It got more interesting. You really didn't know where it was going throughout the season and it just had me invested. The show has a great balance of the kind of tone it wants to go. It's full of action, it's full of heart, and you could really get behind each of these characters. Let's talk about Grant Gustin as The Flash. This guy owns this role. He is basically how Stephen Amell is as Oliver Queen slash the Arrow. He embodies the character, he looks the character, and when I watch this show, I actually see the Flash. That's how good Grant Gustin was as this character. He was funny, he has a nice sense of personality to him, and you just want him to succeed. You want him to go through all of these villains that have been happening throughout the season because I would say mainly during the first half is when you're facing more of Flash's villains and then by the second half of the season that's when it really goes more deep into who Dr. Harrison Wells really is. The other characters I want to talk about are actually the people that are helping Barry get faster as the Flash. Pretty much the Diggle and Felicity of the show. Cisco, at first, I was a little bit worried about him because if you go watch my pilot episode review for The Flash, I do say how he got a little bit annoying. Like, I liked him, but he just got a little bit annoying. As the season was progressing, though, he did not annoy me at all, though. I actually loved Cisco as we were continuing on this journey. He was very funny. He's very energetic. So Cisco is the comic relief of Arrow. I really like the character. When he smiles, I smile just because you could just tell this guy is so enthusiastic. He obviously loves movies because there's episodes where he'll mention movies and it's really funny. He just has a huge passion and for that, I respect you for that, Cisco. I seriously do. And the other one is Caitlin, played by Daniel Panabaker. She's very enthusiastic, just like with Cisco. She really loves her job. And she even has her moments of being really funny. She is just so likable. She's very sweet, she's very caring, pretty much how I feel with Cisco. They're both very charismatic, very energetic characters. Because, you know, you get to learn a little bit about them in the season. Like, you get to meet Cisco's brother, who is a real asshole to Cisco, but you get to learn about him, and then you get to learn about Caitlyn, who loves Ronnie. He's Caitlyn's boyfriend who died from this huge lab explosion. It would seem that he died, but then a little later in the season, we learned that he's actually Firestorm. But then, it's actually a little later that Victor Garber and Firestorm are actually two people that clash together and become one hero. It was really cool how they explored him and I thought Robbie Amell was so great because Robbie Amell, I have really liked this guy since True Jackson VP. I really liked him in The Tomorrow People which sadly was canceled by the CW. It only lasted one season but he was great in that show and now it's great to see him be in this season. And very quick, speaking of the Tomorrow People, Peyton List from the Tomorrow People actually shows up in the season for a couple of episodes as Captain Cold's evil sister, and man, did she do a really good job with that. So it's cool to see two cast members from the Tomorrow People actually be in the show. Detective West is another character that I really cared about. Um, in the first episode, I wasn't so sure about him because 
he seemed rather harsh on Barry and he wouldn't trust Barry about him being the Flash but as he was progressing you really care about him he's standing by Barry's side because he's raised Barry because of the fact that he lost his mother when he was 11 years old and then his father went to prison so Barry has been living with Detective West along with his daughter Iris West and as the season is going along you get this deep connection this very deep relationship that both Detective Joe West and Barry have together because they do see each other as the father and son. It is one of the most heartwarming things about season one, most definitely. Eddie is another character that I've really liked. He actually is Detective Joe West's partner and he's dating Iris. You would think he's one of those side characters, but he actually gets more involved in the show once Barry goes into a new time because if you remember from the episode out of time there's this big tsunami happening so what happens Barry goes through the tsunami and he's in a whole new time starting things over which really blew the fuck out of me by the way just wow so I really loved how the characters that we get to know they somehow get more involved even if it's like in the last say seven episodes of season one I really liked Eddie I cared about the character I stuck by him and it is a shame that he actually died in the season one finale but it would make sense because if he didn't die then Harrison Wells aka the reverse flash would still be alive because he's the ancestor of Harrison Wells that was an interesting twist by the way that was something I didn't see coming but I really liked how that was played out Iris West is another character that I actually do really like yes even when she's in her how you say bitchy moments. I really did care about this character and I really love the relationship that she and Barry have together because obviously Barry and Iris do have feelings for each other but they don't want to make it awkward because of them growing up together and the fact that Iris is with Eddie. But as the season is progressing you are seeing that Iris and Barry do have this strong friendship even if they're not going to be together because they love someone else you could tell that their friendship is so strong it's something to never ever be broken especially when you get to the second half of season one you really buy into how strong they care about each other whether whether it's just them as friends or them being boyfriend and girlfriend i'm sure in season two barry and iris will actually be together they'll be boyfriend and girlfriend i'm sure they'll be dating by season two but as of right now with season one i loved how they played off with each other as just strong friends that truly care for each other and are always going to be there for each other no matter what but now let's get to dr harrison wells this character is so complex he's so mysterious throughout season one you are trying to figure out who the fuck is this guy because slowly each season you're trying to figure out who is this guy and i do want to say the way detective joe west and harrison uh, wells would interact with each other it was intense because you know, you could see that they're drinking together. You could see that they're having some kind of slight friendship talk. And then there's the banter. But then there's the way that the two of them look at each other. Like, yeah, I'm warming up to this dude. But at the same time, I just don't trust them. It's the way the two of them look at each other and talk to each other that just made this so interesting. And when you do find out about Harrison Wells, you're like, Wow, because his backstory is that he used to live in Starling City, yes, where Oliver Queen the Arrow lives. What are the odds? But he got into a car accident with his wife, and that's really his whole backstory for moving to Central City. But then, I forgot which episode it was, it was revealed that 
the real Harrison Wells is actually dead because Hannibal Bates, the son of a bitch, kills Harrison Wells and his wife in this car crash. He shapeshifts by touching Dr. Harrison Wells, who died, and he becomes Harrison Wells just by touching him and getting his skin, which I found very intriguing, and it was something that truly caught me by surprise. This character is so complex that you do not know where he's going and his reasons for just going to kill Barry's mother from when he was 11 years old uh, because he's a reverse Flash. Shit just got real. And I mean, in the first half of the season, you really are wondering what's happening. You see the reverse flash thing. They, this season fools you. It plays with your mind. You see one side is the reverse flash, the other side is Harrison Wells. Uh, the both of them are there at the same time. So you're all like, no, 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 no. Okay, so he's there, so he can't be the reverse flash. And then it poof, it turns around on you, and guess what? He is the Reverse Flash! Holy shit! Like, wow! The focus of this season is time travel. Mainly when we get to the second half, I'm sure we're gonna get more of that in season two, but man, how this season explored time travel was fascinating. I loved when Barry had to travel back in time to save his mother or when he had to go face the reverse flash that night he killed his mother and it turns out the one that was fighting him was actually the flash himself and then we get evidence that the flash is in a missing crisis by the year 2024 which is really trippy and scary as fuck when you really think about it so there's a lot of things a season really makes you think about this is a show that lets you have fun this is a show that is highly investing but this is a show that really makes you think i mean look tv is hard work to do i can see that and i respect tv as much as i respect movies because whether i may like a certain movie or tv show or not like a certain movie or TV show, I understand it takes a lot of hard work to write and I can only imagine how hard it was for the writers to tie in all of these plot points, to come up with all of these inventive ideas to make season one, one truly awesome season. I'm sure they had to do a lot of research regarding the comics and all that, but how they translate in TV, I can only imagine how challenging that must be. But when you get to the season finale, and when Harrison Wells straight up tells Barry why he killed his mother, Harrison Wells just straight up says, I hate you. Like, wow. He really hates the Flash to actually go kill his own mother? That son of a bitch! Also, the father of Barry was actually in the 1990 TV show, The Flash. So the fact that they got him to play the father of Barry Allen, I thought was really good. And I can't say the actor's name right now, but I thought he did a really good job playing Barry's father. You really could see how genuine he is as a person and that you really want him to get out of prison because he did not deserve to go to prison. The reason he's in prison is because the policemen think he killed Barry Allen's mother when he really didn't because they wouldn't believe the story about this young yellow lightning and red lightning just twirling around Barry Allen's mother just like that. Another character I did want to mention was actually the general who is played by, yes, Clancy Brown, the voice of Mr. Krabs and my favorite cartoon of all time, SpongeBob SquarePants. It was so cool to see him play the general. He did a really good job with the role and that was just what I wanted to mention. He just did a very fascinating job. And the villains in the season were really interesting. Like 
Captain Cold, we get to see him. Obviously, he's going to be in Legends of Tomorrow. That's going to be cool to see him more often. He's a villain, but he has that sarcastic and funny sense of personality at the same time, which I think makes him interesting. And the actor, Wentworth Miller, he really does an excellent job as a character. You also get Mark Hamill at one point in the season playing the trickster. And wow, what a crazy villain he was. Oh, and then I also loved when we got to see Grodd, this giant gorilla character. How they translated him was definitely not disappointing at all. The action is so well choreographed. It's very well filmed. The way you see Flash just speeding ahead, it's just fantastic. And the visuals have got to be some of the best visuals I've ever seen on television. I mean, we are talking television and for visuals like this at this kind of quality, it looks amazing. And if the visuals look this great in season one, then I can only imagine how good it's going to look in season two. This show excels at being exciting and fun and full of heart. Now, in terms of my negatives with this season, they're really small complaints, but there are a couple that I did have. The first problem I did have with season one is that the whole Iris and Barry love plot line, which is not distracting, it's only a little bit distracting, but they don't really drag it out because they sideline that. Like they do Barry trying to go fast first and then they do this second, which is why it's only a little bit distracting. And it's only for a few episodes really, but there's this one episode where Iris tries to make Barry jealous when she's with Eddie and Barry tries to make Iris jealous when he's with Melise Joe's character, who I actually liked in the season, but you know, she was only in here for a few episodes and you're like, oh, okay, um, Goodbye, Melise Joe. So when they were just standing there all awkward, I'm all like, yep, I'm kind of feeling the same thing. I'm getting a little bit awkward myself. And really the final problem I had was just that in episode five of the season, they deal with this character named Bet, Betty, one of those things. Um, it was when the general played by Clancy Brown wants to go after her to kill her to expose the metahumans and I actually really like the character Bet. I'm all like oh man I really hope they don't kill her but unfortunately she was a bomb by the end of it so Barry had to run into the ocean and boom Bet just exploded maybe she'll come back for season two who knows for now how season one handled Bet for only one episode of getting to know her a little bit and then boom she dies I was all like um, it was nice seeing you, Bet. And this is not really a problem with the season, but I did just want to point out that the only episode I did not like in season one was All-Star Team Up, where the Adam and Felicity come to Central City to visit Barry and the team. That episode was okay, but it was such a wasted episode, though. Overall, you guys, This season is awesome. The Flash season one. Holy shit, it's awesome. There is nothing else I can say about the season. It explores a lot of ideas and concepts dealing with Barry time traveling. Dr. Harrison Wells was one creepy dude and was so mysterious and how they handled him with the reverse flash. It was just so interesting. The action was crazy good. The visual effects are some of the best visual effects I've seen ever put on television. This is a show that was full of action, heart, and real strong characterizations along with strong writing and strong concepts. I can't wait for season two and how this season ended with the cliffhanger with Barry having to go up into the wormhole. Holy crap. Just holy crap. So I'm going to give The Flash season one 
a 9.5 out of 10. So everyone, in the comments down below, let me know, what did you think of The Flash Season 1? This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!